Welcome to The Passion Pod with your host, Chris Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. Season 6, Episode 7. Welcome back, friends. Today, we are in Hollywood, California, chilling with a social media prodigy turned businessman. I've talked about the power of social media quite a few times before, but our guest today is the best example I could possibly hope to meet. Welcome to the show, (laughs) J-Rap. Thank you so much for having me, man. Dude, yeah, thanks for coming over here and like and working around my schedule and stuff. That was pretty pretty awesome. So who are you and what are you passionate about? Hmm. Who am I and what am I passionate about? I would have to say... um, I'm just this kid that was born into the internet revolution, like right at the perfect time, like right as social media became popular. I uh, I don't know, I started becoming aware of life and realizing that the interactivity on social media is super, super fun to play with and kind of, uh, I don't know, manipulate in your favor if you want to. Um, And so I've been doing that ever since I can remember it. I think I've been doing it now for 10 years. Um, Started it when I was like 13. I was just like... Let's get on social media, make people laugh. Let's make them, uh, you know, like things, like see things that they haven't seen before. Um, and so now it's turned into a whole career where it's just helping so many people with their social media presence, helping them post funny things, interesting things, or just engage with their audience. Uh, I don't know, social media is uh, making people less social in some degree, and I want to figure out a way to make them more social um, by discovering their interest and diving deep into it. And uh, that's kind of just my day-to-day life. It's every single day. It's a new, it's a new day. There's no plan really. It's just uh, kind of free flowing with that uh, consistently in mind. Yeah, I mean it's kind of crazy, right? Like the internet is an extremely powerful tool that can be used poorly or you know for really really cool things. Mm-hmm. And the vast majority of people don't know how to use that tool effectively for multiple reasons. Mm. I think the biggest one because it's an ever evolving tool mm. that like things change quickly Mm. and people have all sorts of stuff going on they're not focused on social media so as things change they don't really know how to use it effectively and it doesn't even have to be used for business necessarily Mm. right it can be used just as a cool way to connect with other people with similar interests about you know xyz or whatever Mm -hmm. anyways so how can people best follow you how can people get in contact see the things that you do like if people want to look more into this or get a hold of you how can they do that Um, I, I would say like my, my favorite social media that I use and kind of just post things as uh, my Instagram, which is JRAP, J-R-A-P-P. Um, just always posting whatever I'm working on, on my story there and, uh, always answering DMs and just connecting with people. And so, uh, that's definitely the easiest platform to get a hold of me. Dope. So the social media is constantly changing. So I had a my, MySpace back in the day, mm-hmm. right? Because that was like the first thing that really came out. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't use it much. Nobody really used it much. Um, Facebook came around in 2007 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really became prevalent 2008, 2009. I graduated in 2008, mm. right? So I, I was like too old for it to a certain degree. Mm. Um, granted, it was like a college thing, but I got married by 21, you mm-hmm. know? So since I, and I was already in a long-term relationship. So because dating wasn't the thing for me on there, I mm. kind of had my like little core group of friends and mm-hmm. I settled down and got married at 21. I didn't use social media the way that most people did because mm-hmm. I didn't have a use for it. Mm-hmm. It really didn't come until I was like, until I opened my skateboard shop that mm-hmm. it was like, okay, well, this is like a tool that like I could use. And I started like figuring out how it worked a little bit. But even in that space, as a skateboard shop owner, you either like people who skateboard pretty much just buy their boards from my store mm-hmm. because like there's a community behind that. Like I was telling you off mic, I skated in that town forever. Mm-hmm. So like social media didn't really matter. It wasn't super important to mm-hmm. me. And then it was when I opened, you know, started doing my show that all of a sudden this tool was like, whoa, this is incredible. I didn't realize this was gonna be so beneficial to me, not just for like numbers for advertisements or something like that, but to be able to connect to people. Because how in the world am I gonna get a hold of most of these people without social media? Mm. You know what I mean? You just, I wouldn't discover them because I wouldn't know who they are. And so I started diving in and learning a little bit more about like how Instagram works. And that's really the only platform that I'm like, know anything about. Mm. But 
that was kind of like my trajectory anyways of like getting into social media and keep in mind this show's a year and a half old so i'm turning 31 on monday and like i never did much on social media till a year and a half ago versus you were like born right into it so what was your actual like what was your introduction to social media um well it, it was advertised super super hardcore like you know i, I would go watch tv and you'd see twitter ads facebook hashtags you'd see like all these things it was kind of like it was in front of your face like pretty consistently and so uh my introduction to it was facebook um i think like 2009 my mom had it everyone was kind of talking about it and so i just i hopped on it i've always like been obsessed with technology you know everyone's got their thing you had skateboarding my thing was like technology whether it's video games playing on the computer playing with different applications like just think that it's so cool to be able to interact with things and so when you take the idea of being social which you know one might say uh being social is the best part of being human because that's kind of the one thing that differentiates us from other species being able to say oh we can connect with one another on our interest and talk about them and post things about them or share photos and uh, you know it just turned into this whole whirlwind of oh here's uh here's everyone that I know and I can just scroll through and see it and if like I, I appreciate people in the presence of people but then having the presence of every single person that you know it's just like this is so cool and let's make some people laugh let's, enter let's, let's entertain them with this just as you would in a social circumstance um, so my mind just instantly clicked with that and that was kind of my introduction to it what was the whole trajectory? I mean, I'm, you've given your story before, mm. and I don't want to like spend a ton of time on it, but just to kind of like paint the picture a little bit more for people, can you give me the brief summary of like you get on Facebook when you're what nine, ten years old, or whatever, yeah. and then I know you like hopped into Twitter, which is really where things started to blow up. But can you can you quick summarize like, yeah. kind of that trajectory? Yeah. So I was um I, I was on Facebook posting like jokes and stuff. I was always like the class clown, like fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, middle school, just always uh, trying to make people laugh. Not really taking school too seriously. More of focus on the social element of it, and so. Uh, once I got Twitter, which when, was when I was 13, one of my good friends back then like introduced me to it and showed me how to use it. I had no clue what any of it was, hashtags, like the at symbol and like what that meant and like how to use it. And as soon as I got a hang of it, I, I was like, wow, this is really, really cool. But I had something within me where I didn't want to like have my own persona be out there. I wanted to create some sort of other persona. Um, and so I, I started this page. It was called True But Funny. It was like my first page I ever created. And I was just, I'm going to post things that are true, but also funny. Um, and so I would just uh, post every single little thing that I could find on the internet that I thought to be true and funny at the same time. Um, not really expecting much out of it. Just I wanted to have an entertainment aspect of it. Um, and so what was so cool to me was I could post things, I could see how many people were interacting with it, how many people liked it, how many people wanted to share it with their friends and the people that were following them. It's like, this is just so cool. And I started to like turn it into like a game almost or like a, a science where I would post something and I knew within like, you know, a minute or five minutes if it was going to do good or not, because, oh, like this one's not performing as well as the last one. And I would just kind of a B test things that are true but also funny and like see what people were connecting with the most um, you know a lot, I find that a lot of things that are true end up having some funny component to it um, but what was cool is it uh, it snowballed into me then having like 10,000 followers over time because not many people had the concept of like oh social media but like not myself like it can be something else it could be a different entity it could be some made up name or some made up brand that you want to create and you can you know create an aura around that um and so i ended up talking to so many different people that also were doing the same thing uh, i think the like first person was like a common white girl page where they would just post like things that like that were common for white girls and they were getting every time they would post they would get hundreds of retweets and stuff and i was like i want to i want to do that like i want to be able to do that so bad um and then what was interesting is the like the person that was the best at doing this art actually lived in my hometown. His name was Booth Blakely. He was super, super good at it. Um, he literally had some of the biggest pages. He had 600,000 followers in like 20, I think it was like 2011, which like, every, like no one had 600,000 followers and as a parody page, as a page that wasn't him. Um, which I, I ended up learning just so much and seeing someone from my town doing really, really good at that. I was like, I can get really, really good at this as well. And, uh, you know, f a few years passed by. I built some of my own pages, had hundreds of thousands of followers at this point. 
and uh, Booth, he he was a little bit older than me. He ended up going to college, and he was like, I, I want to focus on college. I want to be an accountant, all these things. This dude at that point had millions of followers, but he was like, uh, you know, could you manage these things for me? Could you, you know, like log in and like do that? I was like, dude, what? Of course. Like, you know, this guy's got two, three, four million followers, and he's just like, here's the password. Log on in. Do it. And what I found is I'm really good at logging into the like other pages and making them go way up as fast as possible. Because if I if I have an obsession for the stats, I'm gamifying it, and I also love making people laugh. It's like a perfect cocktail. And so I ended up like creating like I think like 30 different pages um, where some of them were around fashion, some of them were around sports, uh, music, uh, every single thing that I was interested in. I would create an entity around that and kind of growth hack it i would uh, you know do we would call it retweet for retweet so i would retweet three of your tweets and then you would retweet three of mine on your page and then i would gain some followers from you and you would gain some followers from me and uh it was really really cool but then what was amazing was you start making money with it and it's like oh now i'm like you know i'm 14 15 years old and there's an opportunity here to post links and get paid every time you get someone to click that link um, which is really, really cool. And I, I could watch in live time my dollars going up. Each time I get a click, I get a cent, two cents, three cents. You get, you know, tens of thousands of clicks each day. It starts to really add up. So and it's like now I'm influencing people and making money. Like this is this is crazy. Like And, and it happened very, very fast. And like everyone in my hometown was like, what is this kid like up to? He's very passionate and loves it. And he, he seems like he's very smart. But like what is going on? And I was just like, didn't even know how to explain it. I was just doing it 24 seven. So how old were you at this point? And was that like very purposeful? And did you see it as like an entrepreneur? Like, do you see it as a business at that point? Or was it kind of just like money's coming in right now, but I still want to go to college to go do, you know, whatever, like your other friend was, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Cause some people, when they see, see an opportunity like that, it, it, it like clicks and they're like, okay, now this is what I'm going to be doing mm -hmm. for however, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Was that kind of the mindset? Yeah. I, I mean, I had an idea that I wanted to do something with, and that I actually was going to go to college for social media marketing. And what I realized was, is I'm actually really, really good at social media marketing. Like my GPA was really bad in high school. I think I had like a 2.2, 2.3 GPA because I was more focused on these accounts than any other thing. I was on the basketball team. All, like I was focused on growing social media accounts, making money and connecting with as many people as I could around the world. And I thought that that was way more fascinating and fruitful for my time than anything else. Um, so I didn't really, I, I saw it, it was literally just a passion. It was, it was me wanting to do that consistently. And I realized like, even though I had that 2.3 GPA, like I got to speak at UCLA, which I, I could not have gotten into UCLA. You need a really good GPA in high school to be able to go to that school. But my passion for social media and doing it very consistently and helping a lot of celebrities gave me the opportunity to be able to speak at colleges that I would never been able to get into. So that's when it like really, really clicked for me that I was like, okay, like this is something like I can actually do this as a profession. I can talk to people and help them. Uh, I can just teach people how to use social media, not as a consumption machine, but as a productivity tool where you're building your network and connecting people together and uh, just making amazing things with one another. Yeah. And so nowadays you like work for yourself, right? But, but, but at, at what point did you kind of decide, or maybe this never was a conscious decision, but at what point did you decide like, okay, I'm an entrepreneur now, mm -hmm. like this is what I'm doing rather than just like wanting to get hired by a big company as their social media person. Mm -hmm. And then it, you know what I mean? Because you can go either route with it, right? You can be independently contracted helping other people, but you're your own business, mm -hmm. or you can be hired by Amazon right. or whatever. Well, actually what happened to me was I, so right when I graduated high school, I, I had been working with a lot of different companies in high school, helping them get traffic to their websites, sell products, sell phone cases, sell supplements, sell whatever like I could. Uh, and I got approached by this company in San Diego and they said, hey, we would love to fly you out to San Diego. I've never been to California at this point in my life. So I'm like, yo, this is my dream come true. We want to fly you to San Diego, put you in a hotel um, and just meet with you and see if we could like, get some business going. Because we had been doing business for three years. I was running this page called College Student um, that my boy Andy Rexford started. And it was the strongest college page. Like It had every single college student following it. 
and they were really trying to uh, just connect with big audiences. So they flew me out there and they introduced me to this dude named Richard Hollis, who he's like the founder of this company. And he's a, he's a biotech entrepreneur. He's He helped uh, create the IV drip system or he was on the team to do that. He's always just been trying to use uh, biology and technology to do things. And so when I met this dude, he's like this you know super wealthy guy. And we, we realized like, my understanding of social media is a form of biotech to a degree. You know, you're 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 messing with people's biology, or you're helping it, enhancing it, or making it worse. Um, what are ways that we can take the idea of biotechnology and what I know, and kind of create communities and grow things and enhance people's reality, just as biotechnology does? Um, and so they kind of just kept me really, really close. They're like, you know, you can kind of have free reign here. You can help us with anything that you want. We're trying to build this social media uh, platform that was like social commerce. It ended up not doing too well. But um, when I got to explain the things that I was good at and showed them and showed that I was reaching over a billion people a month across this network, they were just like, you know, here, like, what, what do you want to do? Like, how, how can we do this? And I was like, well, I really want to start helping real people. I want to start, uh, you know, like actually not just creating fake entities and growing them, but like actually helping real people. And they're like, all right, perfect. And so like within like a week, I'm like, I'm logged into like some big celebrities accounts and I'm helping them grow their social media following. And it, it, it turns out there's a huge need for it at this time. Like this is 2016. And Everyone was just like, log into my page, log into my page. Like Everyone's just trying to get me to log into their page just so I can, uh, you know, really just run up their numbers and help them connect with their audience in a deeper way on social media. And I'm kind of like a method actor, I guess, where I, I, I understand them. I soak in everything they created. Why, why is this person so popular? Why are they so famous? And then now let me develop a voice. What emojis am I going to use? How am I going to speak to them? How am I going to promote this album using social media, different things like that? Um, and so I, I ended up like leaving that company just because I felt that there was something more for me. I didn't want to build that the app that they were creating. It was a social commerce app. I, I think it was a good idea, but it was just uh, it was too ahead of its time. And sometimes when there's good ideas ahead of its time, it just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to do. And so that's when I started my own company where it was just J-Rap Media. And um, I still work with them to this day. Like they, they respected my decision of being able to leave because social media is a 24-7, 365, always, always, always. And so to try to structure it as a nine to five job, uh, it's, it's pretty much impossible because it's really sometimes you got to post at, you know, 7 p.m. on a Sunday night or, you know, like different things like that. And that's the most important time to do it. And so like w I had to reframe the structure of how I would work and what I would do every day. Why would I get out of bed in the morning? And it was just, let's use social media and help people. And I didn't even have a business mind. I still, to this day, I'm, I'm terrible at it. Luckily, I have a team of people now that help me like figure out how to make money and like make it like as much as I can. But really, I, I'm so in love with the concept where I, I consider myself more of an artist and not a business person. I'm more so finding people, collaborating with them, You know, sometimes logging in on their pages, sometimes connecting them with a bunch of big pages so they can promote something. Um, and now it's just, uh, there's all these different ways for me to make money and, uh, you know, thank God for the people that I have around me now that can help me like make it be a business and I can still, you know, be in my artist self, you know? Yeah. I mean, how cool is it? You're basically a coach in a way, right? Mm -hmm. It's like how, how singers will have their, you know, their vocal coach or something, you know, mm -hmm. their social media coach that helps mm -hmm. them put their best selves out there to do mm -hmm. things the most effectively. Like, mm -hmm. like, so going back just cause I, I've, so for me, life was very, very normal, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I my, both my parents had government jobs. My mom was a teacher. My dad worked for the Department of Natural Resources, mm -hmm. very middle income. I went to a private Catholic school through sixth grade and mm -hmm. then, you know, middle school and high school, I went to regular public school. I got like a three, five GPA or whatever. Everything was just kind of normal, exactly what you would expect. And then I went to college um, for business and dropped out because I was like, I don't need this to sell <laughs> to people. Like, I can just do this already. And then sold stuff, worked for different companies. I, I worked for um, Hellsberg Diamonds for a while. I worked for K Jewelers. I worked for Verizon Wireless before I opened my skateboard shop. But it was at that point when I was 23 that I finally was like, I'm going off of what regular the regular path is. It took me until that point. And I felt like I was young at that point to do that you early were all of a sudden were like, okay, well, I'm clearly not the average person, right? Mm -hmm. What did high school outside of like your social media, like things blowing up, 
how how was high school then in that way were you like bullied by people because you were different were you would everyone want to be your friend because they're <laughs> like you can make my whatever my instagram huge like what was it what was it like or did you like once you got that stuff with san diego did you just like stop talking to the other people around you like what was it kind of like um i well so i had to use a, a vpn uh to be able to go on twitter at school, so I would I would work at school. I would be on my iPad. Like I I was living in the time where people had iPads at school. Like that was a thing, and it was normal to kind of have that access. And so you know I bypassed the security network and be able to actually uh, you know post tweets online and different things like that. And I I never got like bullied or anything. I was a very small kid. Like I was like five one. I think my freshman year, um, and I went to a school where I only knew like two or three people there. Um, but luckily I played basketball, so I met a lot of the upperclassmen there and they really, really liked what I was doing. They're like, yo, this is so crazy because everyone had social media, like everyone had it. And then here's me, you know, with my 10, 100,000, you know, 150,000, seeing that growth and like seeing me kind of do that. A lot of people were really interested. And, uh, it was interesting. My senior year was when like, I, I, uh, had like the most amount of followers, most amount of accounts. Uh, and it, it was crazy. Like we did a senior prank, um, for you know as, as seniors do and I, I shared it on like some of my big pages and then buzzfeed picked it up all these big people and i would like see people in class post something funny on their twitter and i would retweet them on this page with like two million followers and they would get like doubt like just randomly they'd have thousands of people like commenting on their stuff and so it was like kind of fun for me i was like I, I was using the power to just have fun i would be sitting in class watching this kid you know post something I'm like, oh, that's funny. I would go and like retweet it. I'm like, yo, what what just happened? What is this page? Like this page with like 2.3 million followers just like retweeted me. And uh, I don't know, I, I had fun like that. And it was like, I don't know. I, I don't know what other people's perspective was on me. I was still kind of in the whirlwind of what I was doing, but um, that was kind of my, my perspective. I was just like, let's have fun. Let's use this little magical, you know, consumption machine to make people's day or whatever. Um, so that's, that's all it was really for me. Yeah. I mean, I think you just grew up in the exact perfect time mm -hmm. or for that particular thing. I shouldn't mm -hmm. say the perfect time overall, but for that particular thing to come around, you're mm -hmm. at that point where like your mind was open enough to this tool mm -hmm. and you could watch all these things pop up and how it works. And like you were still in school, so you weren't so focused on your family. You weren't mm -hmm. focused on your career. This was just at the forefront of your mind. Mm -hmm. So you could kind of see this stuff. So your first real business of your own was J rap media, mm -hmm. um, which you still do, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what okay a couple things for one can you explain it a little bit more clearly exactly what jrat media is and what you like what what its purpose is what you're doing mm -hmm. um and second you're really young but like on the trajectory of what you're trying to do career-wise not life-wise because we can get to that and mm -hmm. life will constantly evolve and there's a lot of things we all want to do in life right but as far as like the career path goes where kind of on that trajectory are you mm. Um, so JRAP Media, it's uh, it's the the main premise of it is to empower people to use social media as a tool that helps them actually make purposeful change in the world. Um, that's really my my main focus, and I found that uh, there's a lot of people that want to be a part of that like mission as well. So I'm able to empower like different kids in college and stuff like that, giving them you know job opportunities to you know, hey, here's everything that I'm doing. Um, I've been doing it since I was 13 years old. It does make money and it also does open up networking capabilities. And, you know, if you can really understand this stuff, like I, I wanna empower, you know, people that wanna work with me and then also empower the people that uh, need the service as well. Um, but JRAP Media, it's uh, because of how good I am at the marketing stuff and all of the resources that I have, um, all the connections, my network is just so strong on social media, as you could probably imagine. And uh, being able to utilize that to get people paid and promote things. And so people uh, will partner with JRAP Media and I'll get a cut of their entire business and I'll be act as like almost like the CMO or just like a, a marketing uh, powerhouse for them. And so like uh, companies will, you know, will get to know each other. I'll get to know the owner of it. We see what they're doing, what their trajectory is, what they're passionate about, if it aligns with making purposeful content, purposeful music, purposeful clothes, whatever it may be, I can then say, okay, I can help you use social media to help it become more purposeful. 
Um, and so that's where it's kind of turned into today. I'm just getting bits and pieces of these different companies and then giving them access to all the things that I have. And it's been working great. And it, 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 I've like, I have people that I consider like my family now that are all, you know, my music and tech family where they're all amazing at technology and music at a uh, integral studio. Um, and we're able to work with all my favorite artists. I've worked with some of my artists that I've been listening to since I was 13 years old, and now I'm literally getting to work with them every single day or uh, getting to come up with concepts to help them push their records. And I'm like, yo, this is so cool. And I have a kind of a business that could, you know, eventually be worth a lot of money or be worth, you know, a lot of cultural, you know, equity, whatever it may be. Um, and so that's, that's kind of uh, the main focus. And where I'm at right now is like uh, where we're we're moving like with that i i'm very passionate about music i think music has this weird ability to bring people together that nothing else that ever existed can and i think that we could probably use technology and social media to bring more people together advertise more events bring them to venues push artists that maybe what you wouldn't listen to but now you're listening to because some sort of social media guy is behind the scenes getting it in front of you um and so we're uh i don't know we're, we're good we're, we're slowly just growing that company um i have another one called icon where we're just helping people discover uh, just different forms of entrepreneurship and helping them act on it instead of just saying oh go to school for it like uh, here is how i learned how to do this without going to school and here's ways of doing it the most affordable way possible here's loopholes and being able to get access to classes that are super valuable to you here's books to listen to here's uh regimens on ways to wake up in the morning and uh spend your time and like <clears throat> there's a I don't know. I, I'm trying to create this like understanding of what is valuable for you when you have this such a powerful rectangle in your phone or in your pocket all the time. You know, like what are you, what are you going to do with it? Are you learning? Are you just consuming social content? Are you just uh, you know watching Netflix and being entertained? Because uh, if you're learning, you can learn so much stuff. If you spent 24-7 learning on your phone, you will become very smart very, very fast. And that's kind of just what I'm trying to embed into each thing that I do. And so far, it's it's been kind of polarizing. So for people that you're at least allowed to say, I don't know what, exactly how secretive everything is, mm -hmm. but who are some of the people that um, you've had the pleasure of working with that you're just really stoked about doing? And I want to know this too. Obviously, you get to be selective about who you work with in the same way that I get to be selective of guests. Mm -hmm. You know, People will say, oh, why don't you have X, Y, or Z on? Well, that's not really how networking works. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, I can send a random DM to somebody, but like, mm -hmm. if I have zero connection to them, it's a little bit harder without mm -hmm. having a huge name to get them to give me their time. Right. It's more like I can with somebody like J-Rap, you mm -hmm. know, and then hopefully J-Rap and I get along really well and we mm -hmm. don't have some kind of dumb little fight and we're just like homies, which I'm mm -hmm. kind of assuming will happen. <laughs> and then after J-Rap's episode comes out, I'm next time I'm coming out to LA, I shoot J-Rap a text and I'm like, yo, you mm -hmm. got any other homies that might be free this week to mm -hmm. do something? And then J-Rap will send me whatever, three people and say, any of these dudes, mm -hmm. you know, if so, like I'll reach out and I go, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Yeah. This person looks really dope. This mm -hmm. would be a cool story. Can you make the connection? And then you do. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like how I've been able to get a lot of guests, right? Wow. That's just like the natural way of doing things. Mm -hmm. There are people that have been suggested to me and people reach out where I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to very nicely just turn you down mm. because I don't think this fits with like what I want to do mm. for, ex, you know, whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So who are some of the people that you've been, in, you know, enjoyed working with? And then when you're looking for who to work with or when people are reaching out, what are the tra like certain traits and stuff? What are you looking for when you want to work with them? Um, well, I'm, I'm one of those people. I, do, I don't know how to say no, which is very bad. And I know I, I've been aware that that is a very bad thing. And I've actually tried to practice just saying no at least once a week, like, because I, there's apparently a power in it, but I just feel that this life that we're living in is so like weird and interesting. And so like, I don't know if I, if, if I say no to that, like who's to say that that opportunity couldn't have been leading me to another opportunity that would equate to something that would be amazing. And so I, I try to always just like believe in life itself and the fact that it's feeding me something that is trying to enhance my quality of life. And that's just how I, I kind of perceive it. And so like I say I say yes to people I probably shouldn't say yes to all the time just because I think that I can help them to some degree and I do help them to to whatever I, I, I possibly can. To be honest with you, my whole perspective of like 
who I work with and what I enjoy has definitely changed as I've matured as an adult. When I first moved out here, I was working with a lot of like big celebrities. I was working very closely with Jennifer Lopez, which was like a uh, super, you know, super cool Latin pop star. Don't really listen to her music, but like I know that she's a very well known person and has got all this amazing uh, abilities to dance and do all these different things. So I, I got to kind of live vicariously through her, which was like super, super cool. Um, got to work with like uh, one of my favorite childhood actors. Drake Bell from Drake and Josh, um, which was like super cool because like I, I was just you know watching him you know a year ago and then here I am like being him and acting as him and connecting with people and helping him as much as I possibly can, which I don't know it was super cool. Um, another person was uh, Terrell Owens, which was like a, he's a you know TL, yeah. yeah crazy wide receiver, very very uh, interesting guy. Being able to work with him and. I don't know, I had moments where, like, you know, I, I would send him ideas and stuff. Basically, like, how it would work is I would, like, I'd be logged into their stuff, and I'd send them, like, a tweet, and I'd be like, I, can I post this? Like, is this good? And, like, t- 10 times out of 10 times, I'd be like, yeah. And so I was like, all right, cool. So, like, one time I was sitting there, and uh, this is where I was like, yo, this is crazy. I, I posted something on his page because there was, like, this crazy play that happened, and someone, like, copied his dance, like, after they scored. And I, I posted it, and... I then see the tweet on ESPN, like like I'm sitting there, posted it, and after I got his approval, and then like it's on ESPN in front of me, and I'm like, this is just so crazy how you can just go from this to this and just see it, like kind of morph in real time and see it, like a, a big network like ESPN take that and utilize it, and all my favorite players were like retweeting it and like all these different things, and you know to them it was it was them being TO and seeing TO, but for me it's like I'm the social media guy like behind you know getting paid to kind of help them out, and I just got this witty idea really quick. Yo, is it cool? Posted, boom. Now it's like I don't know different things like that happen many many times, and it was. It was, uh, I don't know, it was kind of the, it, it, it was cool. But now I've, I've changed to where I, I don't really look, value helping people that are established as much. I'm really uh, trying to see people where they're at and like invest my time in them and know that they're, you know, they're, they're not where they're going to be. You know, five years from now, they're going to be a you know, more evolved person. And if I can help them with that, I find that that's a lot more enjoyable to take a, a celebrity from, you know, already 20 million followers to 50 million followers or to take someone that's at a thousand and get them to, you know, a million. That point A to point B is such a bigger jump and such a more exciting story to tell. And um, so that's kind of like, I don't know how, how I shifted a little bit. I want to I want to help people build from the ground up as I feel that I'm you know building myself from the ground up as well. Um, but I don't know. I've gotten to work with so many uh, interesting, amazing people that I never would have thought like I I would get the opportunity. And it happened like once a day. I'll just get hit up, be like, "Hey, this person needs help with this," or "Hey, this person uh, is pushing this album. Can you help them with this?" Or whatever. And I'm like, "Yo, yeah, of course. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll say yes to pretty much anything, even if it's you know now if it's a celebrity or if it's just some random person I meet on the street, I'll, I'll help them with whatever." Right. Well, I mean, so there's a couple of problems, right? So the first being. Um, and it's not necessarily a problem, but you're young, you have a lot more energy Mm -hmm. than you're going to have at Mm -hmm. some point. Right. And you, your availability is a little bit different, Mm -hmm. right? Because you're so involved in this, Mm -hmm. you know, versus like my perspective, I have a store that dominates a lot of my time. I have Mm -hmm. children that take a lot of my Mm -hmm. time and it's not really possible for me to put as much time into Mm -hmm. it as like somebody like you will. Mm -hmm. So if you don't say no, what's going to eventually happen is the burnout effect will happen, Mm. right? It's just only a matter of time because people only have so much energy. Mm. So that's where it comes down to is like, okay, well, how much work, how much can you put on you if it doesn't feel like work, but like how many responsibilities can you put on yourself and not be like constantly stressed out and have to say no to your personal things because you have to do all these other types of commitments. And then the other part is it's exciting when you're young to be able to say that you worked with whoever, Mm -hmm. right? That's exciting. And that, and that's dope. You know, Mm -hmm. like I've been able to have some people on the show that really aren't like mega famous, but Mm -hmm. to me are like, pretty big names or, mm. or whatever and that's really really awesome um that i get to work with them but like it, you got to look at like the giving back effect right mm. how important that is like mm. making money is important sure but at some point making the money isn't important because you have enough to do the things you want to do mm. that's what i you know i kind of told you off mic is i feel like i make a, about now that i got divorced i could really use a little bit more money but mm. in general i make about as much money as like i need to to do the things i want to do mm. but if you can look at somebody growing them from the one thousand to you know a million or whatever mm-hmm. 
you're helping them so much more mm. because somebody like Jennifer Lopez is so established that mm -hmm. even if she's making way more, how does that affect your life that much? It right. doesn't, right? right? If you could instead help 20 people get their things started, we, we look at like the wage gap, right? Mm. Like that's a huge, huge, huge problem. We have classism, you know, because mm -hmm. the, the wage gap is so huge. Helping the uber rich get only more rich right. isn't benefiting the world, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And at some point, like empathy and consciousness hit and you're like i re to me it's really important to leave the world better than i came it in mm -hmm. like that that's extremely important to me when i talk to somebody that does something for a living that they feel doesn't doesn't bring value to the world mm -hmm. like you're working for somebody that you disagree with or whatever mm -hmm. i get it's a paycheck hopefully it's a temporary thing mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to swallow that pill mm -hmm. and say you're spending the majority of work of your waking hours making the world worse mm -hmm. like that's horrible right. you know so the fact that you you know are telling me like look I would prefer to help people that like aren't in the position where they can just pay somebody a million dollars to like go do this for them. That's mm -hmm. really, really cool that you're being mm -hmm. able to be put in that position and still make enough money to do the things you want to do. Yeah. Like you're able to do, you know, both things. I want to like ask you about this because I was listening to this other episode um, that you did and you're talking about like information being nutrients to, to the youth. So mm -hmm. what I was just saying about classism is like a, a huge problem, right? And, mm -hmm. and I disagree with like fraternities and I, they're in private schools. And I really just disagree with all of that. Mm -hmm. I think that if we all were confident in ourselves and if we were being honest, we should want everybody to start with the exact same advantage. Mm -hmm. Everybody should start at home base and mm -hmm. have to make it to first mm -hmm. versus starting half of the way through third base to home you know what i mean mm -hmm. already there the internet is that beautiful tool that didn't exist before mm -hmm. to level the playing field mm -hmm. granted it doesn't totally level the playing field that never will right because mm -hmm. there's 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 spectrums on on everything but for somebody that can't afford to go to college that mm -hmm. can't afford to pay people this that or whatever how do you feel like the internet levels the playing field? How how can you how would you tell people how they could use the internet to put themselves in a better position when they come from a place without mm -hmm. without anything? Um, well, like there, like I think a lot of people just need to get more familiar with Google and the, like the powers that it really can unlock. Like you can type in pretty much anything and figure out just about anything with that. And like even like for me, I, I tell people this all the time. It's like kind of a loophole that I found. I don't go to college, but I have a .edu email. How could that be so? I typed in on Google how to get a .edu email. Boom, .edu email, two dollars. I'll send you a login. Okay, now that I have a .edu email, I can now get the benefits of a college student for two dollars, and that means I can get an Amazon Prime for really really cheap. That means I can get uh, Adobe for literally a tenth of the price. I can get all these different little tool sets that these companies are trying to get you to utilize in your college years so you could uh, potentially use it for the rest of your life and they can make a bunch of money off of you. That's why they make it so cheap for these .edu emails. But like, you know, just type in something, type, like, type it in. People hit me up all the time. They ask me questions and they think that I'm super smart. No, I'm just good at Google. They literally will send me, ask me a question. I'll copy it and I will paste it into Google and I will spend 20 minutes learning all about it and I can come back to them and it's like, dude, you're so smart, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I'm just resourceful. And like Google is so powerful. If you had Google in, 18, in the 1800s and no one else had it and all the stuff that it has on it today, you would be able to take over the world. You would be able to connect so many dots and do so many different things. And so like, I feel myself being very drawn to social media still, even knowing that fact and acknowledging that fact, where I go on Instagram, which isn't valuable information. It's cool shit that I can look at, which is awesome. And it's cool people that I know, which is awesome. But is it adding value to me and the things that I could bring to the table, to a conversation? And I got that, that really like, you know, flipped a switch with me. And I realized like social media is like very sweet. It's like, you don't want to eat sweet things all the time. If you eat sweet things all the time, you're going to have a bad diet and you're not going to be able to operate properly. If you're just eating artificial things and seeing those things over and over and over again, you're just, it's, it becomes very repetitive. But if you can say, this doesn't taste as good, this reading, learning, watching educational YouTube videos doesn't taste as good, doesn't feel as good. But when I walk away, I feel much better a day later, two days later, because I'm having a conversation and I sound more resourceful. I am more resourceful, not sound, because now I have more things inside of me. And just, I think that, uh, I don't know, I, I really aim to help 
the the youth of today understand this fact because um, there's this there's this book called A Genius in All of Us and it, it was so interesting to me because what they did is they studied um, a, a a kid from a wealthy family and they studied a kid from a poorer family and you it, it makes sense now to me but being able to say okay you're from this wealthy family did you know that wealthy families use better vocabulary more words around them they're utilizing more information. And, and that kid starts soaking it up from zero years old and all the way up into their adolescent years. They're really, really soaking up everything that they're hearing. And so the difference now where we can level the playing field is you can get access to that super valuable knowledge and potentially em- embed yourself in that. And you could be a quote, you know, uh, you know, poor family, but have access to the rich knowledge that the rich have. And maybe it starts to kind of balance it out a little bit. And there needs to be a way to kind of teach people these principles because these were not things that I was taught in school. They, I, I was taught how to utilize like everything and learn about things, but I wasn't really taught like, here's how to uh, have an actionable step and here's why you need to do it and here's why education is valuable. I plan to learn every single day for the rest of my life. I don't plan on saying, I'm just gonna learn up until I'm 23 years old and then I'm done and I'm gonna get a job. No, every single day I'm learning something new. I'm interested in things. I'm, I'm also trying to unfold things that I, I, I thought I knew about. Like I've lived on this planet for 23 years and I learned about plants like plants are like super, super cool. I, I learned about them in school, but I didn't really understand like, hey, like there's an interconnected ecosystem of plants that are all feeding and connecting each other. They know when another plant needs help. They're connected within their roots. And then I think, hmm, like human beings and their consciousness, is it interconnected within its roots, my roots, where I'm from, your roots, where you're from? Can we connect and p- transfer information back and forth to one another to help each other grow and enhance our quality of life? Absolutely. But with like social media and the internet, it, it, it potentially could mute that ability or it could spark it into and put some steroids into it. Cause now it's like, I know everything about your interest. Like we can have such a valuable conversation right now um, because of the amount of time that I've been spending, uh, you know, learning instead of just consuming things. And I like to ask people too, is like, can you tell me one thing that you looked at on social media a week ago? And, you know, they kind of, maybe, you know, but I could tell you a bunch of things that I learned that I spent, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes looking at, I could talk to you about it all day. And so that's where the the difference comes. And that's where, you know, then you're going to start, you know, spilling out to me what you learned. And like, I think we got to figure out how to make this be like a globalized, like understanding, like let's use the internet to literally interconnect with one another through our conversations and our interests. And uh, maybe we start to level the playing field a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, so I, I mean, a couple of things to touch on. One, the the plant thing. This is one thing that like I, it really bothers me in America. And I'm not trying to be negative, but I, I really want people to like switch their mindset on it. So I like hammer on it all the time. We always compare ourselves to the Joneses and we think that we have to have better than our neighbor. Mm. Um, and we get angry when our neighbor all of a sudden has whatever, something nicer. They get their lawn looks better than ours. Mm. Think about it this way. If your neighbor's lawn looks better than your lawn, your real estate value is higher mm. simply because your neighborhood around you is doing better. Mm. Therefore, if we flip our mindsets and we say, okay, well, we want our neighbors to do better because that naturally reflects better on us, wow. right? With mm-hmm. our friends. Then all of a sudden we realize we, we're not competing mm. with each other. We're helping each other grow. We're all on, our, we're all on a team together. Me and J-Rap are mm-hmm. on a team. Mm-hmm. If he does better, I do better. If I do, if I do better, he does better. So why wouldn't we continually try to help each other? And I'm, I'm not saying empty your bank account and give it to somebody else as a tool because they need it. Mm. Just looking at what are your immediate resources that you can help with that don't necessarily take away from things that you're capable of doing. Right. We probably all have ways to help each other without really going that far out of our way, mm-hmm. right? Ideally, that's yeah. what that's what we're trying to do. The other thing that I was going to say, too, is people say they don't have time for stuff. But if you look at, I don't know what the statistic is, maybe you know off the top of their head, but the number of hours people stare at a screen, right? 
of the day is like really significant. Mm-hmm. And like you said, with Instagram and stuff, I, I like I definitely like using Instagram and I, I, I learn a lot through it. Um, more so from an inspiration aspect mm-hmm. than, it, than any actual real information. Right. But if you if we were all to collectively, and now I'm like juiced, like I'm gonna start doing this. If we were all to set a timer and say how people, you know, say I wanna read 10 pages of a book a day. If we were to set a timer and say, okay, 30, 30 minutes a day, I'm gonna spend Googling questions that I'm wondering about. Mm-hmm. Just like, you know, putting questions through your phone that come up throughout the day, mm-hmm. set them aside and say, every morning I'm gonna set a 30 minute timer while I drink my coffee and just Google and learn stuff. Mm-hmm. Think about how much information so you'd much. Be, <laughs> you would be able it's, to gain. It's incredible. Um, so I, I love to ask, uh, I like to give people advice when they ask me, I should say, I like to give people advice. People ask me for advice with business stuff. Mm-hmm. And when I say people, I typically mean younger kids that are hanging out in my store. It's not mm-hmm. like I'm this business mogul that people like <laughs> reach out to. Um, but I usually give people the same, same couple pieces of advice. And I'll say them again, cause I really drive them home to people. My one piece of advice is sell yourself as a solution to people's needs. Mm. You don't, you're not selling a product to somebody all you're trying to sell to somebody is, hey, if I have a problem, I'm going to I'm gonna hit up J-Rap mm. because he's going to know how to solve this for me or he's mm. going to help me put it, you know, put me in the right direction with whatever. Mm. People are going to come to you as a resource. That's mm. ideally what you do. My store, I don't sell products. I sell the experience of like, this is the place you come when you need skateboards because mm-hmm. this is the friendliest spot. We have all mm. these cool things and we'll help you like do those types of things. So that's the first one. The second one is I think you can work with almost anybody all you have to do is identify what is mutually beneficial for both parties. Mm-hmm. Then it's not asking somebody a favor, mm-hmm. right? I could say, hey, J-Rap, I want my Instagram numbers to go better mm-hmm. or, you know, to, to get go grow. Mm-hmm. How, can you help me do that? Mm-hmm. Now I'm asking for a favor versus mm-hmm. if I were to say, hey, J-Rap, I'm trying to get my numbers to grow. Not really sure how to do that. Mm-hmm. What can I do for you? that in exchange you can kind of help me with this Mm -hmm. with what with my resources what is there is there a way we can find this Mm -hmm. and make this work then we're both happy Mm -hmm. and there's almost always a way to do that Mm -hmm. right you just have to identify whatever that thing is if you had one or two pieces of advice in the business world Mm -hmm. what would they be um i think the first one is for sure that you have to be a good person and work on being a good person. A lot of people think that being good at your craft is all you need, but you know, there's people that are really good at doing a lot of different things, but I would prefer someone that maybe isn't as good, but is a good person to be around. Cause at the end of the day, I'm doing business with you. I'm going to spend a lot of time around you. And so like as a business person, work on being the best version of yourself and the healthiest version of yourself, thus being able to be a vessel of healthier things. And I think that that's probably like the first one that I I kind of came to fruition very recently. Um, And then uh, the second one, I I would just say I create value, create conversations with every single type of person that you possibly can, because you literally do not know who they are, what they do, who they know, you don't at all. And it might be the perfect person for you to talk to. I, I meet a lot of like, you know, younger males and they're always like trying to talk to girls and they're trying to, you know, connect with them, but they're, you know, sketched out about it. They don't know what to do. I'm like, well, I think you're kind of just overly thinking about trying to connect with this girl. Like, what if you were just someone that is always trying to connect with people? And if you were just always, no matter what, you know, it could be an old lady, whatever, talk to her, talk to them, whatever it may be, have a conversation. and opportunities and ideas will flow when you find that rapport, especially with a stranger. And I I think that business is all about utilizing your imagination and creating a plan to make your imagination come to life. And the more you talk about it and the more you get another person's perspective from a different age bracket, from a different background, the more you become enlightened about the idea and maybe can get closer to achieving it, becoming a reality. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, I've noticed this now that I've been talking to more people out here, I, you know, talk to some people that are success is, is relative, but you know, whatever successful in their craft. I tell you what, the vast majority of the times that people are like pretty successful, they, they're like the nicest people to talk to. Mm. And it just like, I, I was, I've said this a few times on the show now, but like I, I had the idea that people like that would not want to look me in the eye and be like, mm. you're not important. Mm opposite effect Mm -hmm. right and it's like this that's probably part of the reason that they're doing as well as they're doing Mm -hmm. is because everyone likes working with them because Mm -hmm. they're just cool like nice people um so getting into uh, you i guess we asked this before or you've been asked this before like what's a what's a quick thing to do for social media i I listened to i forget i forget what the episode was but i really loved how you described like look social media is just a social tool if you want your things to grow organically, you just need to be social. Mm-hmm. And that's really it. 
Uh, and I have this this term that I like to use. I don't even know where I, where it came from, of uh, saying I hate when people cool guy me. Mm. You know what I mean? When they're mm-hmm. like, I'm too cool to do that. People tend to do that mm-hmm. on social media where they're like. I'm too cool to comment on something Mm -hmm. or I'm too cool to whatever. Mm. And I've noticed that with myself that my social media is like works a lot better if I just actually leave comments that Mm -hmm. of whatever I'm thinking Mm -hmm. when I'm scrolling through. And I follow a lot of art pages because I just really like looking at Mm -hmm. art and I, you know, I'll drop comments on it and and then I'll see things actually grow. Mm -hmm. So obviously like that is a good way. But if there's like some, what are, what are a couple like do's and don'ts? Are there any like misconceptions about how to use social media? Like things, you know what I mean? People do, because a lot of times people will put effort in for something with the intention of whatever this is, they, this is how they think it's supposed to Mm -hmm. work. And they're just, they just don't know about it. Mm -hmm. Um, well, so I, I, I like to take the media part out of it and just like becoming social, you know, say you go to a party, there's a bunch of people there. How would you be able to get that crowd to want to look at you? And most of the time it's having an entertaining conversation with people and having a genuine entertaining conversation with another person. And I think the same rule applies to social media where it's like, I want to have a genuine connection with you. And that's actually true. And that's definitive. Some people, they're like, I, I'm only doing this so I can build my page. And I'm only doing this, like, who wants to be, like, that's like someone, I'm only doing this to build my ego. That's kind of like what you're saying. I'm, I'm only doing this so my numbers can go up for me. It's like, no, like, if you could flip the script and I'm only doing this so I can actually interact with people around the world and expand my worldview and expand my appreciation for art and expand my appreciation for clothes and music and but over and over and over again, the more you train your, your mind to appreciate those things, the more people will be accustomed to appreciating you. And that's just like, I think often overlooked in the in the social media space because it's like that ego thing you're seeing all these people with all these numbers and all this stuff like push all that stuff to the side because that stuff comes as a result of you doing interesting things and you having interesting connections with people and you creating cool entertaining things that people want to look at just as and when you're at the party creating the entertaining you know set you're, you're setting up the things you're doing whatever it's uh i don't know that, that and it's as simple as that and also if you if you really want to get into it like use Google to study like what makes people social, what makes people closed off, what makes people want to interact with you, like type that in. Like when people like assume that they know, but like, yo, you can type it in. There is like a science to this. <laughs> like there's like, there is a real truth to ways that you can interact with people and get the most out of the situation and enhance both of the qualities of life. And like, that's what I, I think is really my main focus and should be everyone's main focus. If you really want to build your social media and grow your following, You need to figure out how to be sitting there and genuinely being interested in people. Because if you train your brain to be interested in things, those are the coolest people to hang out with. When you're walking around the street and like one of my friends, he's obsessed with clothes. So he starts conversations with so many people that are very genuine that become friends just because they have cool shoes on or just because they have amazing shirts. And he loves, he's like trained his mind over the past 10 years loving clothes so much that when he comments on the clothes, people are like, wow, like you're the most amazing person ever. Cause he's like, you know, shedding his beam of like, I've been exercising this love for fashion and now I'm exercising it again here with you. And you can feel that strength and connection with him and then they want to follow him on instagram they want to be at his parties they want to whatever it may be and uh i don't know train your train your level of interest in every little thing that you are currently interested in because just like when you go work out and you're working out your biceps working out your chest you're working out every little thing you can do that with your interest work out how interested you are in music learn about production even though you don't want to become a producer but now that you know a little bit about production you're going to be able to connect with every single person that you meet that says they're a music producer and if you did it for long enough they're going to think that you're a producer just because you're so dang interested in it and uh, i think that that's just uh one of the, the trick of the trade is how interested can you be in things because if you're really interested people are gonna be super interested in you and they're gonna be like what is this guy got going on he's got so much going on just because he's literally being interested in things oh yeah and i, I want to go back because i kind of lost my train of thought and forgot to, to mention it when you were saying about just like you know 
it, putting it out, what you got to do is you got to put it out into the world, right? Mm -hmm. Manifesting your destiny, whatever it is that you're looking to do, mm -hmm. you can't call around and say, who can help me with this? But if mm -hmm. you just genuinely are looking to do something, so like my show, a, a good example was I was in Florida and I was just talking with somebody. I was playing chess with somebody mm -hmm. and my voice carries because it, it's just loud. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about my show and saying like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be recording again soon and I got to mm -hmm. try to find some interesting people and whatever. Everyone's interesting, so don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. you know, looking for guests or whatever. And the, the, per, the bartender or whatever there um, overheard me. She's like, oh, tell me more about your show. And so I did. And she's like, oh, I have this cool person for me. And she introduced me to um, this illusionist, Wayne Hoffman, who's like wow. just the coolest dude. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had a, ended up having him on the show. A great connection. Great. Just a great guy. And he introduced me. And I, uh, I ended up interviewing two people on this trip out to L.A. that were friends of his. And he lives in Florida. Wow. You know what I mean? And it really wasn't with I, I wasn't trying to do that that night. Mm -hmm. I just simply was being open about, hey, this is who I am. And this is what I do. And this mm -hmm. is what I'm hoping to do in the future. Mm -hmm. And if you're just like always doing that and mm -hmm. you're just genuine mm -hmm. people will hear you it'll come out if you're being social right. right and then people you'll come across whoever that you wouldn't think would uh -huh. be the right connection who ends up being you know you never know what somebody <laughs> can eventually do for you you know mm -hmm. And, and not in a way of like, please do this for me. But you never know when somebody's going to pop up that's mm -hmm. going to be really integral to your story. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It could be anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to hear what your thought process is on this a little bit because you've worked with like a lot of celebrities and stuff. Can you talk about the importance of recognizing your position or like anyone's position as a role model or somebody in power, somebody who has resources? Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about the importance of that and how – how important it is that they use it effectively and for the right reasons mm. to do the right things. Mm. I think it's extremely important to recognize when you are a role model. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like if, if you have that, and maybe I'm wrong because I don't have a lot of money, but I feel like it's almost your obligation to mm. like give back if you're in a position like that mm. and, and use your resources and whatever position you're in, your tools mm -hmm. to help rather than hurt. Mm -hmm. I think that there's, uh, I mean, of course we want everyone to enhance the quality of life for other people that's like the main focus for every little thing and when it comes to people that are you know well known and stuff i i, I also got to keep in mind like they built this from the ground up on their own they didn't have to spend the tens of thousands of hours doing it and building this huge career around it and doing it they found it a talent and they pursued it and they've dedicated their entire you know one life that they got to doing this and like who's for me to say that they need to utilize their life in some way because like you know without them even doing that and going through all that work like it wouldn't even be a topic and um you know i think moving forward the the perspective of like celebrity and uh what matters is changing for sure i think hollywood is going through like a huge shift right now where i guess they saw that the oscars had the lowest view rate since the beginning of the oscars like which like they had 20 million people watch it last year this year they had 10 million so you're seeing this kind of paradigm shift of people that are kind of just created by companies and being put in front of people um, and like they're acting as politicians saying that they they care about you and blah, 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 but really they're just, you know, profiting off of it. And someone said some like crazy story that uh, there was a, um, at the Oscars this year, they had to clear out a bunch of homeless people out of that area because all these famous people were coming around. And I guess the, the best film was a, about a homeless person or something like at the Oscars, which is just like a crazy thing to me. I think that's, it's the paradigm shift of what people see as inspiring is changing. I don't think there's going to be any one person that you say, oh, we need to change their behavior. They're going to have to figure that out on their own because they're going to see their influence kind of slowly deteriorate and go towards people that are more inspiring, more engaging, especially to the youth of like, you know, the Gen Z like movement, you know, a lot of them are very like environmentally conscious now. A lot of them are very uh, health conscious now. And I think just because you have access to the internet, you're learning so much about these things and you're learning what's BS and not BS. And uh, yeah, I, I think that we just need to focus on helping our youth discover what really is valuable role models to have, not what does a big company think should be your role, role model, because that might not be what's best for you. Yeah, well, I mean, it comes down to you vote with your dollar, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's kind of how it works. And mm -hmm. if if you want somebody, we need to reward those people that are putting 
good into the world, mm-hmm. right? We need to tell p- those people that we appreciate them. And that mm-hmm. could be on all levels, mm-hmm. right? It could be a celebrity that does, you know, makes a donation or, or just makes a beautiful piece of music mm-hmm. or whatever. We need to celebrate people that are doing those types of things. Mm-hmm. But people are really quick, I think, to hit the like button or comment on a favorite celebrities, whatever. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, they kind of forget to do that for their close friends. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if we can all focus on the people directly around us a little mm-hmm. bit more, I think that would make everything a little bit better too. For sure. Um, this is the point in the show. I always like to hear people's stories because people, I mean, you've been sharing stories and everybody has uh-huh. great stories, right? But when you pursue things you're passionate about, typically your lifestyle is a little bit different than like mm. your average nine to five working, you mm-hmm. know, whatever in an office. So you end up having a lot of cool experiences. You've traveled all over the world, worked mm-hmm. with all kinds of people. If you could share one more specific story, some, some experience that you got to have that you're really grateful for, mm-hmm. but it only happened because you chose to pursue your passion for helping people mm-hmm. socially, what's the story you're going to share? Um, well, having your, your, uh, office be the internet, you know, it opens up the, the doors of all barriers and there's, uh, so many different places that you can go and you can connect with any kind of person knowing a lot of things about the internet because all of us use it to some degree. And if you're some sort of savant to it, it opens up, you know, doors where you can pull up to Paris, you can pull up to Trinidad, you can pull up to all these random places and connect with people based off of that premise because they use the internet there. And like, I, I think that like, what I'm most thankful for, I would say, is that my ability to just get up and get to go wherever I want, whenever I want to go. Like, if, if I want to go somewhere, like, or there's an opportunity, there's nothing holding me back. That if, if the internet's there, I can, like, be there. And uh, whether it's, like, getting to go to, like, I, I went to Trinidad with my friend. He hit me up a day before he wanted to go to Trinidad. I didn't even know where Trinidad was. And I, uh, it's off the coast of Venezuela, if anyone uh, <laughs> yeah, doesn't I didn't know. know. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's just this little island off the coast of Venezuela. And we, we went there, you know, and uh, got picked up by one of his friends there. His name was Brave Boy. He was a super, super dope dude. And we we were just like, I don't know, we, we, were, we were treated very interesting. We were going, like, radio shows. He was promoting and stuff. We were on TV in Trinidad, all these things. And it was just literally what I, I had no premeditation to this whatsoever. It just happened. Um, and this happened a few times. Like one time I was just in New York and I was like, I really want to go to Europe and we're like kind of as close as you possibly can I was trying to get some of my friends to go and I'm go. And I was like, all right, I'm just going by myself. So I just, uh, you know, hopped on a plane, went to France and just was by myself and ended up meeting all of these amazing people and connecting with them on the common thread of, oh, you use the internet too. And, oh, you're really good at it. Oh, and you're also interested in fashion. And it just opened snowballs into this whole thing. And, um, I don't know. I wouldn't say there's any particular moment that I favor over the other. I think I just, I, I particularly like the fact that I can just get up and live in some, any place that I want, like a digital nomad and just like, that's awesome to me. Yeah. I mean, my favorite part about entrepreneurship in general is the freedom that it allows, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you are making enough money, money is just a tool. So it's not that important, but Mm -hmm. it, it is a tool, right? As long as you have enough of that tool, you're free to do anything you want, Mm -hmm. which is such a beautiful thing. The Mm -hmm. fact that your time isn't dominated by what somebody else wants. Mm -hmm. You can spend it however you think is most valuable to Mm -hmm. yourself, to the, you know, others around you. Mm -hmm. And with a job, or I don't even want to say a job, I guess, but Mm -hmm. how you work exclusively through the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can kind of go anywhere, which is dope. I mean, I only a skateboard shop. I close it for January and February every winter because I don't really make a lot of money during Mm -hmm. that time frame, if any, Mm -hmm. you know, and then I just travel and work on other stuff. Mm. You know, I was in Florida this past year and I just like worked on paintings, oh. you know, and I, I worked on my show. Like I recorded a whole season in February, wow. you know, and I, I, it was just like, I have the opportunity. I can kind of go do anything that I want. And that's one of the reasons that I like push people so hard. And I know that like not everyone can be an entrepreneur not everybody mm. wants to be an entrepreneur and that's totally fine. Mm. I'm just so heartbroken when I see people that work so hard to make however much money, but they still only get their two weeks off a year Mm -hmm. and they can't live their life the way that they want to Mm -hmm. because it's dominated by by somebody else. The freedom is what, you know, what I love so much. Mm -hmm. We all make a bunch of mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, And hopefully, like I told you off mic, actually how I had lost an episode in the first season, Mm -hmm. hopefully those mistakes happen really early. Mm -hmm. So that way you're like, oh, I'm not gonna make that mistake again. Mm -hmm. Can you share a story about a mistake that you made that taught you something (laughs) that was really valuable? And the reason I'm asking is because I'm hoping that that lesson can benefit somebody listening. Mm. Uh, 
mistakes that I've made. I'm I'm trying to think because like my mistakes are so peculiar, dude. Like they're not like it'd be hard for me to say like oh someone's gonna like really relate to that. But like I just like I've had moments um, where I've been in the position to you know control these like social media entities and. Uh, you know, had my best judgment and the judgment ended up like kind of blowing up in my face. And this is like kind of an interesting story. I guess I'll share this one. Um, so I was running uh, Drake Bell's account and it, like from Drake and Josh, I love Drake and Josh, probably watched every single episode 50 times growing up. I love this. And um, so I'm posting on his page, I'm posting a lot of Drake and Josh related memes because I'm really good at memes and I knew I could blow his page up if he was posting like Drake and Josh like type of memes doing really really well with it i loved it a lot and and just seeing the growth over and over and over again but i posted this one meme it was about josh peck which is the other guy on drake and josh and it was it was a fu- it was funny as shit. it was a funny meme but i uh i get back to my computer the next day and i'm logged out of my uh, of the page and i'm like why did they change the password like what happened and we hit them up and we were like yo hey we're uh you know lo- not logged into the page whatever and then they're like well josh's team called us and said that you were bullying him and getting all these like people to like make fun of him and mock him on social media and all these different things and blah blah blah, blah. and like now he's like pissed at drake and like d- like thinks that he like hates him and all these different things and i'm like I'm like, yo, it was just a meme. It was a funny meme. It did really well. It got great engagement, all these different things. Like I was just, you know, like kind of poking fun, whatever. So, you know, don't poke fun at people. But what, how it kind of uh, unraveled was uh, Josh was getting married like two months after I had posted the meme. And Drake uh, wasn't invited to his wedding, which was like a crazy thing. Because it was like Drake and Josh was like, everyone loved this. Sh-. Everyone loved Drake and Josh. And the fact that uh there's no drake at josh's wedding is like what like how is this possible like and and it's like oh he's like mad at him for something and i'm like wait i'm like trying to like did he not invite him because of the meme that i posted and it turns into this like this is like a really viral thing like this is like every single kid that like grew up watching drake and josh so like this is like all over twitter and they like I guess have this feud just because I posted this one meme on a page and like they couldn't like explain that we had a social media guy that did it and blah 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 um but it was interesting they they ended up making up at the VMA awards I think this was in 2017 and they were just like talking and they're just like hey man like we're we're friends again blah 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 blah, but like just like just tell people on the internet to be nice to me like please like it's just like that's all like i I, like and he's like dude it wasn't my fault blah 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 blah. but me just watching my like childhood heroes i've been watching my entire life and like enjoying the moment of being able to you know collaborate with them and help them and do these different things and then watching this whole viral thing unfold that ended up being like beneficial for both of them i thought was just uh I don't know. It was it was a crazy story, and what what ended up happening too is now they both love posting memes and like like kind of jabbing at each other about it and different things like that. I'm like, God, like I was just ahead of my time with this thing and like <laughs> seeing it, but like it, it really did hurt me because I literally felt like I had my childhood heroes and I like I I messed up their relationship. Um, but I, I, if any lesson you learn from it, don't post things on the internet that are jabbing at people or you know jabbing people at all. It's not good. It can spark a feud that maybe is way too out of proportion than you would ever think. And so like the more you can put out good positive energy out there and like keep everyone's empathy in line and every single little thing, like the the better you'll, you'll be at avoiding those uh, consequences, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, people think like you can't be funny if you can't like, if you, you avoid certain topics or something or mm-hmm. whatever. And I definitely don't think that's true. Mm-hmm. I think that you can find a lot of joy and spread value through exclusively positive stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. And obviously like something like the internet, we just need to respect how powerful it is mm-hmm. and putting something out that like has some kind of jab without having a conversation with that person about mm-hmm. how they may or may not feel about it is mm-hmm. just like a dangerous thing to do. It mm-hmm. might not matter to them, mm-hmm. but I mean, so put it this way, I went to college and the only class I felt was really valuable was interpersonal communications Mm. and what that class taught me was that people process communication differently depending on the medium Mm. which is why texting isn't really the best form of conversation Mm. right because you can't hear somebody's inflection in their voice you can't understand Mm. like you can't see their facial features you can't Mm -hmm. tell 
somebody may read the same text message totally different, right. which is why people end up getting mad about like nothing, mm. right? So it's just about being like careful of, okay, well, especially if you're representing somebody else, right? right. Is like, how is this person going to feel about it? You right. know, and obviously in that case, like you didn't consider it, yeah. you know, and thankfully in the end, it ended up not being a bad thing anyways. Uh-huh. But obviously it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> well, anyways, moving forward, because we're coming to the end of the show, uh-huh. what, are, what, what projects are you working on right now? What's going to be coming up? What can we look forward to seeing? Um, well, right now I've, well, ever since quarantine started, I've had this like super like trying to learn things that I didn't have time to learn and the different problems that we have in the world and um, seeing if I can use the internet to some degree to help it and using my skills to help problems. And uh, I got approached with this opportunity to help this guy, his name's Murray Peterson out of uh, South Africa. We basically are creating this thing called Sunshack and we're uh, pretty much installing solar panels on tops of shacks around Africa and creating this economy where people can share and sell their own electricity, which a lot of people don't have access to electricity. But what's also really cool for me is we're uh, unlocking their ability to have access to the internet as well. Um, and just some places, like a lot of places have access to the internet. It's actually kind of crazy. Like there's kids that in, in Uganda right now that have access to the internet, but not access to hospitals. And it's like uh, the internet is very ubiquitous. And um, I think there's so much opportunity for these people to now have access to the knowledge and resources that we all have through the internet at least and uh hopefully create a kind of like a different economy based off of the sun and its energy um we're also there was this uh like I, i have this one company it's called art plus plants and we're just like figuring out ways to creatively help the world through art and through plants is kind of the main focus but we're uh we we found that when you paint uh, a specific environment like vibrant colors it actually changes the whole ecosystem there so these shacks we're also going to be painting them and making them like really like i don't know like they're right now they're just like silver and just like i don't know taking in a bunch of heat and stuff like that but to make them like you know a nice light blue with a nice mural that kind of tells a story about the town but then also you got this like solar panel we're hopefully going to be able to start uh helping these like uh, problems within apartheid in South Africa because uh, like a lot of people in Africa there's like a there's a line literally of beautiful suburbs and then shacks and like the quality of life you can literally see it black and white perfect like it's 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 so bizarre and it's uh like trying to figure out a solution for that it's like okay we need to empower one side so that's where the solar panels come in um you know we need to get them creative and figure out a way to maybe eventually like get some sort of like garden that like has that like middle there's literally a middle apartheid and it's like what if there's a garden in between there and people are eating from both sides and it starts to create a community or something like that so um yeah it's just sun shack be on the lookout for that it's going to be um a really really cool project that i hope expands into more areas outside of south africa but being able to get the blessing we got our uh a referral letter from uh the city so they're like all cool with it and saying all right go ahead get started and so we're gonna set them up and turn into this whole you know commodity exchange through to the sun which i think is just dope Oh, it's incredible. I don't understand why we haven't moved. Well, I do understand, but we need to move more towards things like renewable energies and Mm -hmm. solar. And I I mean, some people, I feel like they're, they may be in a city or something where they're just not around a lot of nature. Mm -hmm. So it's out of sight, out of mind. They forget how valuable it is. But I tell Mm -hmm. you what, if you go out for a hike in the middle of like the forest, Mm -hmm. you're going to all of a sudden have a little bit of appreciation for how, how nice the air smells all of a sudden. Yeah. I think that, um, I don't know. Thinking about sustainability is something I never really thought about, but you know, you you watch enough documentaries about like what's going on. It's, I, I feel very compelled to use my uh, my God given talent and also just my uh, I don't know. I I got some sort of blessing to be able to grow up in America and have access to all this technology so easily without friction and not many outside things really getting in my way. Um, and I'm aware of that, and I want to be able to utilize that to actually make some sort of change in the world and not just like just make change for myself being money and different things like that like can i can i use what i got to help other people like like kind of level the playing field and so i'm always just trying to come up with different ideas and help people and 
that these opportunities come because I literally will just donate my time and my resources. I'll build the website for the people without them even asking and I'll create it and I'll make it as amazing as I possibly can and I'll help them market it and introduce them to other people. I'll like harness the power of the internet to really help people and uh, you know, any problem that you could possibly think of, you could probably come up with a solution no matter who you are out there. Like there's a super huge opportunity for you to say, oh, there's a problem here. Like, let's try to fix it. Let's use the internet and try to learn what's going on. There's someone out there that has created some sort of technology that you could figure out how to connect it to that place and it helps them or some sort of uh, way of living. And um, I don't know, I, I also just like I like Africa, a lot of different places, I, seeing the quality of life there and then also seeing the quality of life in places like there's these places called blue zones and blue zones are where people live very long and they live very healthy lives. And it's because they have a sense of community. They have the right diets. They live in places that are very na nature based. And so these people are living to 120 years old. And I see people on the other side of the spectrum where people are dying at 13 years old. It's like, where can we take the, the truth of blue zones and mimic that and paste that into places that are missing that. So I, I say, you know, there's blue zones and then there's red zones. The red zones, I just say it's very hot and it's killing people very fast. And the blue zone, it's very cool and everyone's just living and vibing. And it's like, can we figure out a way to kind of make this whole world a blue zone? Um, and what are the steps that we can take? And you literally just have to start at a small sample size. You get 20 shacks and can prove that you can do it there. Maybe it'll expand to a whole different, you know, type of... Uh, I don't know, economy, a whole different type of, I don't know, enhancing the people's quality of life here. Because uh, it, it scares me. I mean, looking at this like climate change stuff, looking at uh, just the fact that we, we live in such an opportune time where we can do whatever we want and we can have as much fun as we want. But if we do it like this for much longer, it's not going to be, anyone else is not going to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, I just think that we've got, we've got some opportunity here to really make some stuff shake. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's awesome. Usually I end the show by asking, uh, asking the guests to say, you know, how can people best support you? Mm. Obviously you just want to support the world. Mm. So, I mean, yes, a lot of times when I ask that it's because people are, are just budding on something new, right? They mm. have a new album. And if people listen to the episode and they're like, man, mm. I really, I like J rap and I want to help with whatever you're working on a lot of projects, helping other people. Mm. If there is one call to action of either supporting you or a project you're involved in or a project you care about, mm how what direction would you push people to go um honestly like i just would love to talk to you i've got time to talk to anyone and just figure out ways that i can you know connect you with uh, some way of utilizing the internet in a purposeful manner um and or if you just are interested in getting into the world of social media or whatever i'm i'm really keen to the idea of helping people discover a way of becoming an entrepreneur. Maybe they don't feel like they can do it now. Maybe they feel like they're going after a degree in college that they aren't necessarily excited about. And, you know, you got one life. And so if you can figure out a way to really make the most out of it and not in a, in like a cliche way, but like actually like really understand your passions and really pursue them, you will get to a point where you feel like you're waking up every day and just uh, connecting with a little bit more of yourself as days go on. And um, you know, I'm here to help. I have a bunch of friends that, you know, would love to just talk to people. I really like living in Los Angeles because there's a lot of people that have, uh, you know, discovered their own craft and worked on it for a long time. And uh, me being able to live out here, if you're ever out here, I'm here to help you connect. I'm always doing like art shows or, uh, you know, just different things, trying to bring communities together. And the bigger the community is, the better. So um, if anything, just hit me up on Instagram, JRap, and uh, I'd love to talk. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.